For those of you who own an analog pocket, there now exists a core that allows you to play Super Game Boy on the system, allowing you access the Super Game Boy features on the TV and the handheld device itself. Sweet! But you know what is just as good as playing Super Game Boy? Playing Super Game Boy 2! An option that requires a bit of modification to the core itself, but that is what I'm going to show you in this video. So, let's dive right into it. Last year, the Analog Pocket was released. This handheld system is basically what I would call the ultimate retro handheld game system. This system uses an FPGA reprogrammable chip that allows for authentic recreation of Game Boy hardware, resulting in native performance. Not only does it play every game in the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance library, but it also allows you to play other retro handheld systems, such as the adapter that I have right here, where it plays Game Gear games. As far as the Game Boy features go on the Analog Pocket, it allows you to switch from different Game Boy display modes, from running it in its original garnish green colors of the original Game Boy, to the Game Boy Pocket and light displays. There's a lot that you can do with the Analog Pocket, but one feature that people have been requesting and have hoped for since the Analog Pocket launched is the option to include Super Game Boy features. This is nice for accessing the Super Game Boy exclusive features, such as sound clips accessible only through the Super Game Boy hardware, or custom color palettes that allows for full color images in certain variants. For some, Super Game Boy is the one thing needed that would make the analog pocket just about perfect. And thanks to OpenFPGA, which is the Analog Pocket's open source FPGA development community feature, the system now allows users to create custom cores, not just for retro handheld systems, but even retro consoles like the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. But for now, let's focus on the console that matters the most, the Super Game Boy, which got its own core thanks to a user named Spiritualized1997. He has made various different cores of retro consoles, and one of them includes a core for the Super Game Boy. Now you can use the Super Game Boy features, both on the analog pocket screen itself, or even on the TV, where you can now run the Super Game Boy in about the same way you would on the Super Nintendo itself. But why end there? Because you know what else would be neat to run on the analog pocket outside of the Super Game Boy? The Super Game Boy 2. Now, I'm sure a lot of the people watching this may not have heard of the Super Game Boy 2, and that's because it was released only in Japan. Yes, the Super Game Boy 2 was released in 1998, and it was made mostly with the purpose of giving the Super Game Boy its own link cable port, something that was primarily requested in the case of battling and trading Pokémon, allowing that type of feature on the big screen. Also, the Super Game Boy 2 has got that sweet LED light that powers from the system, and of course, the Super Game Boy 2 has its own custom borders and color palettes for certain games like Tetris DX, and also exclusive borders not used for the original Super Game Boy, like that sweet motherboard design that is good for games like Mega Man, for example. There are some other differences between this and the original Super Game Boy, and some of you might want to have these extra features on the Analog Pocket. So, I'm going to show you right now just how to access those features. It's going to take a bit of modification, so let's begin. Here is what you're going to need. An Analog Pocket, a micro SD card, the size of it doesn't really matter too much, you could use an 8GB card and you should be good to go, and a computer and internet connection. 
First, I'm gonna start off with the Super Game Boy 1 on the analog pocket, as you're gonna need that core to get Super Game Boy 2 running on the system. The first place to get the Super Game Boy 1 core is by going over to the Spiritualized 1997 GitHub page. I'll have that linked in the description below. One thing to take note on is the part in the README description where it says there's two files that run the Super Game Boy Core, sgb underscore boot dot bin and sgb underscore snes dot smc. This is going to become very important later on in this video, but for now, you're going to want to go to releases and over on the right hand side, click on the newest release. From there, download the zip file and move the files over to the root of the SD card. Now, to eject the micro SD card and put it into the analog pocket, and from there, you should have the Super Game Boy running on the analog pocket. Now, that's one way to get the Super Game Boy Core running on the system. The other, more easier way, and this is a much easier way, one that I'd recommend doing even more of getting the Super Game Boy 1 core running is by downloading Pocket Updater. The link to the GitHub page will be in the description. Go over to the Releases tab on the right and download the zip file. Extract the exe file to the root of the micro SD card and you'll have Pocket Updater up and running. This is great not just for installing cores the easy way on your analog pocket, but it's also really good for updating the firmware, which you are going to need to do. Update the location to removable storage and let the app do its thing. Once you've got the cores selected and installed through the pocket updater, then that's where you eject the storage and you should have all the cores up and, up and running. And that is how you get Super Game Boy 1 running on the analog pocket. But now for the more complex part, and probably the part that a lot of you came to this video for, getting the Super Game Boy 2 running on the analog pocket. Now the next thing you're going to need is a ROM file of the Super Game Boy 2 BIOS. I'm not going to give any links as to where to find the Super Game Boy 2 ROM file, but once you do have the ROM file, then the next thing to do is to go into the micro SD card and go over to the assets folder, go to SGB, and from there, you'll find the spiritualized Super GB folder. Copy the folder to your computer as you are going to need a backup of this. Once you do that, then go into the spiritualized Super GB folder that is on the micro SD card, and from there you'll find two files, sgb underscore boot dot bin and sgb underscore snes dot smc. The smc file is the ROM file that is needed to boot up the Super Game Boy. Now, copy the Super Game Boy 2 ROM file onto the folder. Next, copy the file name of sgb underscore snes and then delete the file itself. Afterwards, paste the sgb underscore snes file name onto the Super Game Boy 2 ROM file. Also, if this is an sfc file, rename that extension to smc. The main difference between smc files and sfc files is that smc files are more compressed but the analog pocket will still be able to run the SFC file just fine. The only difference is that the file size would just be slightly bigger, from 256 kilobytes to 512 kilobytes. This barely takes up any space on your SD card either way. So now with that part done, let's eject the micro SD card from your computer and test it out on the pocket. So now, by running the Super GB core, you'll see that it now boots up into Super Game Boy 2. All of the assets are here and everything. If you're running Tetris DX, you'll now have the Super Game Boy border that is made exclusively for the Super Game Boy 2. So that's the basics about how to get Super Game Boy 2 running on the analog pocket. But it might not be the most practical thing to swap ROM files between the two and manually copy everything back and forth every time you want to use the original Super Game Boy and Super Game Boy 2 files. 
What if you want to have the option to swap between both on the analog pocket itself? Well, keep watching, dear viewer, as there is a way to do that. Once you have the micro SD card back into the computer, go back into SGB folder you were at before and rename the Spiritualized Super GB folder to Spiritualized Super GB2. You could really name it anything you want, but that's just what I'm calling it personally. After that, then copy the Spiritualized Super GB backup folder that you have saved onto your computer back into the SGB folder. Once that's done, then go back into the root of your SD card and go into cores, make another backup on, on your computer of that Spiritualized Super GB folder. And once you do so, then rename the folder in the micro SD card to Spiritualized Super GB2. Afterwards, copy the backup you just made back into the cores folder, and you'll have the folders of both of the Super Game Boys. Now, go into the Spiritualized Super GB2 folder, and from there, you're going to need a source code editor. This is where you'll change a few lines of code, and this is not something you need to be an expert at coding to know how to do. Believe me, I know next to nothing about coding, but this is still really easy to do. I use Notepad++ for this. It's free, and it gets the job done. Once you have your code editor ready, go into core.json, and under short name, rename it from SuperGB to SuperGB2. And under description, where it says Super Game Boy Core, call it Super Game Boy 2 Core. Once that's done, then eject the micro SD card and put it into the analog pocket, power the system on, and under Open FPGA in the Super Game Boy section, you should have two different cores, one for the Super Game Boy and the other for the Super Game Boy 2. Test those out and it should be able to boot up both the Super Game Boy options. And once that's successful, then that's it. You're all done. You can now boot up both the Super Game Boy 1 and 2 on the analog pocket simultaneously. The analog pocket is already shaping up to be the ultimate way to play the entire Game Boy library as it is. In fact, I like the system so much that I think it may have replaced my Game Boy Advance SP as my go-to way to play my entire Game Boy library. And having the ability to play both Super Game Boy 1 and 2 further adds to that experience of having the analog pocket be in the system, the ultimate uh, portable gaming system, to play not just Game Boy titles, but even other systems like the Game Gear. And that makes it such a sweet device. But what do you guys think? Do you own an analog pocket? And would you be willing to play Super Game Boy 1 and 2 on the system? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, then subscribe to DSL Media for more content. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.